All right, gals and gamers, it's your dude, your boy, your man, Stubbs here with the Famar. We're going to do a quick recap to conclude the project. I will get to some shooting footage, but you know, I've got some talking to do first. So we're going we're gonna to go over this. We're going to get some shooting for it. No, no, look at the gun. Look at the gun. I've got an AR-15 barrel. I have an AR-15 bolt. I've got an AR-15 trigger group. And the transfer bar is not really that bad. And it feeds from an AR-15 magazine. This is a dummy round. The trigger resets. And the trigger pull isn't as horrible as I would think from a 3D printed transfer bar. The front handguard here is removable. I have some alternate ones. The safety is stiff but functions. Locks the trigger here. And this little piece indicates the uh, status here. You can feel it. Very stiff. It can go left or right. Semi-auto, both sides. The top handle is interchangeable as well. I've actually got mine solder iron welded together at the top, no screw. You can bolt it together if you want. I just found it easier to solder iron weld it. The charging handle requires a little bit of custom fabrication. And the screws and bolts aren't too ugly. I've got a standard air magazine, standard magazine catch right here. Sling swivel on the back, DLC sling swivel on the front. All right, one of the big improvements is the overall length. I've had a few people make this with a 16 inch barrel, it comes to about here. And that makes the overall length about 26 and a half to 27 inches exactly. I have a 20 inch barrel on this. Right here, there's about one inch added to the receiver so that an AR-15 Kintry buffer can work in here. This is actually the back of the buffer here so that the butt pad does not add any length to the gun. So with an 18 inch barrel, the FAMAS has a 19.2 in actuality. It's the same overall length as a FAMAS. I went with a 20 on mine because I had an M16 cold hammer forged FN barrel just laying around, as one does. Now let's cover some parts I don't like. The sights are crude, brutal injury. Good enough for backup sights, good enough for shouting distance. Bolt catch, I took it out. I wasn't fond of it. It didn't seem to work very well. And also the charging handle comes back just enough to strip around out of the mag, but the back of the charging handle stopped by the stock here. It would actually have to come out past the Kentry buffer. So with the charging handle, you cannot take the bolt back enough to lock the bolt open. It will still cycle and reciprocate and do so upon firing, but the charging handle stops here at the back, although the buffer and bolt can go back further when it actually fires. So that's just one quirk it has due to being so compact. Another is the overall length of travel on the trigger is somewhat long. Although it's not a heavy trigger and it is crisp and it has a noticeable reset. So, I'll take what I can on a bullpup 3D printable gun. Another huge point of this is modularity. I have a top cover for this that is lacking the top carry handle part here, the scope riser. Let's you put something right on the pick rail. It looks like the nice little flat top FAMAS Valerie's. I have an F1 style grip with a traditional trigger guard instead of the whole hand guard some people seem to hate. Doesn't have this little flare on the front. I've got a Picatinny version of that. And I even have a version that mounts my 37mm launcher directly onto the handguard here. I doubt this is at all practical, but something you can use like this one handed and a shield. This is hilarious. Because, I mean, you can hold the thing out like this, center of balance, center of gravity, right in the middle. The shield has a sling, it has a three-point sling. I'm on to something. Magazine compatibility. This only takes a Stenag AR-15 magazine, or something as thick as a Stenag AR-15 magazine. A Lancer will work. It's tight, it won't drop free. The Stenag won't, unless you file it a little bit, mine still... Nice and tight. It's got some junk in it from being fired. You're going to have to make adjustments. I had a second magwell I released. Cut all the way up to here. It will take Schmeister 60 rounders. 
mag pulls, drum mags if you want to have your arm out to here. But that's just one of the quirks of the platform. I'm really happy with how this came out. It's a great feeling gun. It's what I wanted to make. This is what I envisioned when I started this project. I had a few people help. I had a few people make their own. And I had plenty of suggestions, a lot of requests, and I tried to fulfill all of those requests. I will have a feline style optic with a remote viewer, just like I did on the Andabata remote gun camera system before my uh, KAC chainsaw style AR. And I'm going to adapt that to function with this and the flat top version. It's one of my favorite things, and it's the only future weapon system that I have seen to see actual use. France is using that optic in Djibouti right now, and it looks ridiculous. It sounds ridiculous to say. But it's actually surprisingly effective. And for a room-to-room -room operation for clearing, probably home defense, which is just reverse room clearing if you really think about it, remote optics shooting around corners... That's not too bad if you can see what you're aiming at. So we'll see what that looks like. All right, so now that I've got the boring part where I talk out of the way, let's get a few shots of this firing and I'll see if I can splice in a few pictures of other people's successful builds of the platform.